Here on Earth, gravity is always around pulling you back to the floor. And in fact, nearly everywhere in the universe, gravity is pulling you in some direction. So what is gravity, and how does it affect the entire universe? Gravity is one of the fundamental forces of nature, which means unlike something that's not fundamental, such as a liquid boiling into a gas, which can be explained by intermolecular forces and heat energy, gravity can't be explained in other forces. Gravity is gravity and it's not made of anything else. Gravity is defined as the attraction between two different masses, where a larger mass means it has a stronger gravitational pull, but if you move the two masses apart, the gravitational force weakens rapidly due to the inverse square law. Gravity is the weakest of the four fundamental forces, but like electromagnetic force, it has an infinite range. And while it does lose power very quickly with range, it can still affect things light years away. In fact, the practical range of gravity is predicted to be nearly 16 billion light years, which is the point at which the expansion of space itself overcomes gravity. Because of this range, gravity is the main force in constructing the shape of the universe, from creating solar systems to creating galaxies, and how the galaxies interact with each other. Gravity is also involved in the smaller scale, such as keeping moons and planets in orbit, helping form the very stars, and when it does form an exceptionally large star, it will eventually collapse it into a neutron star or a black hole. Now, if we head back to a more earthly scale, we can deal with a problem that a lot of people have when they first start learning about gravity, and that's that two objects, even if they're completely different masses, will land at the same time if dropped from the same place at the same time. If we can answer this question, we can explain a lot more about what gravity is and how it works. To do this, I have an old wallet filled with loose change and a piece of paper. Now, because the wind and air resistance can affect this, we crumple, we crumple up the paper to reduce its air resistance. So now it has a similar shape to the wallet. And in three, two, one. To explain this quick demonstration, we have to start talking about what gravity actually is, rather than just what it does. We can think of gravity as a vector field. In physics, a field is something which has a value at every single point that's in range, and a vector means this value also has a direction with it. The most common way to think of and represent these vector fields is to imagine you have a sheet which represents space. And then at every point, you have an arrow drawn on it. The direction of the arrow is the way in which the force is directing, and the size of the arrow is how strong the force is at that point. For gravity, at each point, the direction is towards the centre of mass, and the strength of gravity is force per unit mass. And if you take Newton's law of force equals mass times acceleration, and you rearrange it, you'll find that force per unit mass is equivalent to acceleration. And this is why gravity is often talked about as an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared. And this is also why all objects fall at the same rate. Gravity is an acceleration applied to each mass, not just a force. However, Einstein found that gravity is a physical distortion of space-time. So if we draw a sheet as a representation of space-time, when we place, say, a star or a planet in it, it actually distorts and pulls down the space-time and then we can draw our arrows back on afterwards. Einstein also said that energy and mass is equivalent, so this means gravity must also affect energy such as light, and this is true, we can actually test this. We can measure the mass of distant galaxies because they bend the light of stars behind them, and the more they bend the light, the stronger the gravity is, and also the more massive the galaxy must be because of this. Now you may have noticed that I said gravity is nearly everywhere in the universe, but it also has an infinite range. So you may be wondering, why isn't it everywhere in the universe? And this is because if you have one body orbiting another body which orbits a third body, such as the moon, the earth and the sun, there are five points in which there is effectively neutral gravity where the gravities between them cancel out. And these are known as the Lagrange points. And at least two of these are very useful to us as we can orbit satellites around them to gather information about the moon and the sun 
far more easier than you can with satellites in orbit around the Earth. Stars owe much of their life to gravity. Gravity gives birth to stars by crushing clouds of dust together into enormous temperatures and pressures until fusion can take place. Then for the next few billion years, gravity and fusion fight in a close equilibrium of power. However, as the star runs out of fuel, gravity wins and crushes the star into a tight ball. If the star is big enough, and therefore there's enough fuel left over, this crushing will spark one final catastrophic release of fusion energy, causing a supernova. And then the remnants left over are crushed completely into a neutron star or a black hole, which are the very extremes of gravity in our universe.